anti-rise, let's talk that because I think you've taken a big departure from the approach on Gen 2 to what you've done on Gen 3 with anti-rise. And I think some of this comes from some experimentation that Fabian did back in his Kona days. I think like, it's, it's true. Like, I was also like kind of surprised to hear about that because I was like, okay, yeah, because back then the Kona's all had the floating brake arm and I knew the story, what it does, that it basically reduces uh, anti-rise to almost zero. And anti-rise, and, for people that don't understand, this mm -hmm. is what the back end of the bike does when you're heavy yeah. on on the brakes exactly basically. if it's basically extending or, or basically compressing or if it stays neutral yeah uh, more or less and uh, back then like i always thought like okay uh, that's the application uh, to just like lower the anti-rise and then uh, just suddenly like in a conversation with fabian he mentioned hey no 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 you're getting it wrong i did it different and i actually didn't didn't pay attention back then that he actually like he used a different position for the floating caliper uh, on his race bike than the consumer basically could um, on their regular uh, like free ride bikes uh, which is basically he inverted the whole principle and had it basically compressing and, and there's a bit contradictory because like you know um, if you're having for instance also uh, maybe like on my personal everyday trail bike when I'm riding trails I don't know or like I don't know I'm don't have like a proper race technique to carefully choose where I'm where I'm braking um I'd probably like be happy with an with an uh, anti rise around like 50 70 percentage or so like just a neutral thing to have it fairly active because you know like I don't break maybe in the best spots and like I know like as an average rider you sometimes also mess up a little bit here and there you <laughs> yeah. know and then and then and, 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 then it helps but but you know if you're like racing the same racetrack over and over again you know where your where your braking spots are and uh, and also sometimes i think valdisola has also like some some sketchy places like basically when you're coming down from a steep and then there's a little flat flat road you're crossing and then you're going down again or also here like in Windrock at the track there's some some places there's some some weird places where you need to burn off velocity quick mm -hmm. and where riders like you've been with us during track walk where they basically they said okay you need to be careful you need to be breaking in here to avoid being too quick because otherwise you would overshoot the next turn and yeah. to puzzle together and like what what uh, the, this concept does we came up with this basically it helps riders burn speed in awkward places while maintaining your composure on the bike that is basically avoiding uh, you to um, to like tend to pitch a bit forward and you can basically burn speed quite well and you get basically you're in contact with the ground and it can heavily decelerate to basically set you up for basically the next like i don't know the slope where you want to accelerate again so yeah. um that's yes, basically that. the difference yeah so for everyday riding probably like 50 70 ish could be okay but if yeah. you're like really in the zone and you want to like fine tune your braking on a track you really know very very well yeah so that higher anti-rise is stopping the bike front end of the bike kind of pitching forwards Exactly. As you brake hard, helping you keep centered on the bike. And I, exp I experienced that today. I got a little bit carried away yeah. on a on a fast kind of rocky straight. And I was having yeah. a bit too much fun and forgot how quickly I was approaching the corner yeah. and uh, had a little bit of a, of a panic and then slammed on the anchors so hard that I thought things were going to go wrong. And somehow the bike just was very calm, slowed down very, very quickly. And I got around the corner perfectly. And I, I genuinely thought I'd well overshot a breaking point. So nice. it, it works. I was, yeah. I was impressed. Like the, com, the, com, the, the level of composure of the chassis under those conditions is like ne it is next level fair play and also like you, you know like the races usually like they tend to, to to choose the braking spots fairly well so they break basically where you can break very well yeah and if it's in the rough stuff they just let it roll and nowadays like you know like riding style has changed so much and like how they're pinning it and i think basically like nowadays they're just crushing through places just full speed Whereas in the past they would have dragged their brakes and they're just like go for it, go for it, and going through and and, and, it, and that basically because the riding style has changed so much that basically allowed us to go in that direction. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and there's potential downsides though, right? High anti rise can lead to like people using words like harshness or packing yeah. in the rear end. Like, how have you yeah. gone about avoiding that? Yeah, we basically learned a bit like as we varied with the with the axle pass that you could basically partially mitigate the the drawbacks you might get 
by by the by the river the axle path and that it overall like basically basically created a super interesting super interesting package so basically like if we would have done the same with uh with the previous sender it would have ended up in a super harsh bike okay and uh, basically like with the with the parameters we chose we could basically or it basically allowed us to to create it like that interesting mm-hmm.